So, uh, Paul, Again, thank you for being with us. It's great to have you here. Good to be here. Again, Thanks. second time. Yep. And uh, uh, we had a great time last time. I think uh, we talked a lot about banking by phone uh, yeah. at that time. Which um, we're still waiting for. Yeah, but it's I mean, coming. It a little bit. Yeah. You're probably a believer now. No, I'm, I definitely I was a believer back then, too. But I, I'm known for being a believer a lot earlier yeah, than sure. you know, the average consumer. So. Which you have to do. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and this, I want to kind of frame this up differently because things have changed so much since just a couple, three years ago. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, I've been following Qualcomm for ages. Uh, great company, different products, Europe, America, watch the whole thing kind of go through 2G, 3G. The wars. Yeah, the wars, yeah. the wars. And, Which I and, hope uh, over. Yeah, and, and since we're on a big IP kick uh, this, this week, it appears, I'll also give you 10,000 points off the start for being probably the most pure IP company I could think of, which is ballsy and impressive and hard probably to have done, and congratulations. Well, you know, I mean, some of that happened in a way that was <laughs> less than expected. You know, we used to go out and we were trying just to get the upfront fees and the ongoing royalties. That was sort of the afterthought. Right. Now it's turned out the ongoing royalties really was the important part, and we got there because people didn't expect that CDMA was going to succeed. Yeah. Well, congratulations. It oh, worked. Thanks. And, yeah. and I think you and, <laughs> you and your dad, Erwin, both uh, deserve a lot of credit for recognizing the future role of IP in the world. Yeah. Both kinds of IP. We had the, you know, we put the uh, internet protocols into the phones in the early yes. 90s also. <laughs> I'll try to give three more IPs while we're sitting So, um, but now, okay, everything's changed. And, and all that great stuff, that's history. Uh, but if you look at the world today, and we always go to three to five kind of years forward, uh, man, I, I, I was saying to you, if, you if, if I look at this thing now, uh, maybe there are three companies, but I think uh, even so, there are your, your company is the company in the middle of the main highway. And, and, and congratulations are for putting it there. Are we in a car there. or are we standing there waiting? You could to get be there. either an oncoming, you know, wherever you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> the bus is coming down the road, it's going to be in the, you know, right in your face. So, um, you know, that's fantastic. It's gonna, I think it's going to put a lot of pressure on you personally. It's going to yeah. put a lot of pressure on the company. Uh, th things that may have been small mistakes will be huge mistakes. Things that would have been small wins will be huge wins. Uh, this volume's going to go up, and, and uh, we'll all be even more dependent upon your success than we were yesterday. Uh, you, you're no obviously pressure. What you're saying is no, no pressure. pressure. No. Okay. And, and obviously, the, the two parts of this that kind of leap out are uh, it's not a bad thing to own the wireless world. That worked out pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's doing okay. A and got, a, got a billion 3G subscribers out there in the world now. Yeah, and it's not, a, it's not a too bad thing to own the phone world. That worked out pretty good too. Yeah, that's... Uh, so as the, as the whole computer kind of comes downstream into the phone, uh, there you are. Wow. And uh, so I kind of want to lead off with uh, how you see all this large landscape stuff where, where is that going to go uh, from now going forward, three to five years? Computing. Take it from anywhere you want to. No, I mean, I, you yeah, know, I think, uh, you know, we, we spent so much time putting all this computing and consumer electronics capability into the phone. Now it's going to go into the computing devices, right? Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so you have things like this. You know, this is a, a compact, just started shipping to Telefonica. It's a smartphone inside, but it's got a laptop-sized battery. That battery is mostly running the display because the display uses too much power right now. Mm -hmm. We can talk about that mm -hmm. later. <laughs> but this thing, you know, when I close and the display is off, this thing is a smartphone. It's synchronizing all of my content all the time because it's on the network all the time. I open it up and my stuff's just there. Mm -hmm. And that's true of my, you know, the productivity application. It's true of my Facebook status. All those kinds of things just happen. So that notion of taking the phone and sticking it into computing-like devices, yes. and obviously we all know about tablets and you know that that's a big deal yeah. too yeah. Uh, you know that's that's fundamentally going to change the way that people do computing it's yep. always on it's it's telling you you know it's it's instead of sitting in front of the internet you're going to have it with you mm -hmm. and and all right so people get that right now but what they don't get is the next iteration of that which means that we're going to be able to merge the cyber world and the real world together, and the phone or your computing device is going to be that in intermediary real in, in real time. time. And, and in fact, composited in you know, augmented reality with video and all sorts of stuff yeah. going on simultaneously. And, and it won't just be over the cellular networks, like we were talking about at lunch, it's gonna be peer-to-peer -peer networks that are gonna do that, 
I'm going to walk through the environment. My phone's going to discover that there are things around me that are offering me services or content, some kind of information, whatever it is that I might want to get access to. Mm -hmm. I got to do that at very low power so my phone still makes calls at the end of the day. Yep. And all that stuff's going to happen. So it's a really, really exciting time for the fact that we have the internet with us. You're getting all this context around us. We, we made up this word or I, about eight years ago, 10 years ago, aorta, meaning always on real-time access. Yep. And we're just now getting there. It really, that's very and, true. And human behavior, the, the, the reason to have made that word up at that time was my guess, and I think it is true, and I think you're going to agree with this, that human behavior radically changes in an aorta environment. How yes. you use the tools, if you have to wait 15 minutes or even 15 seconds, that's a different kind of lifestyle than real-time access to things. Well, I mean, you notice that even from things like the iPhone and now all the phones where, I mean, the graphics capability is being used so that when you move your finger around, the things track exactly. And if it has the slightest little lag, you get ticked off. I yeah. mean, you have such a high expectation mm -hmm. for a thing that's sitting in your hand. Mm -hmm. And then I think the other thing that's going to happen with real-time access is, you think about what the internet did, it sort of time shifted a lot of things. You got to it when you got to it. And so instead of having these moments where everybody was gathered around the radio or the TV, experience a moment simultaneously, it doesn't really happen that way. Right. I think in the future it's going to happen again Going that back. way. So when yeah. something major happens, the groups of people who are interested in it, whether it's you know, a new Britney Spears you know, vi music video or, mm -hmm. or some escapade, uh, you know, or, you know, or something terrible like uh, oil spill or you know, hurricane, or, yeah, I mean, any bad things. People will know about that right away. Mm -hmm. So that's going to change too. We're going to have shared experiences mm -hmm. again. Yeah, and, and I think that this, this idea of, uh, whether it's augmented reality, whatever the words are, where, where you, you can't really do that with a delay. You, you've got to have right. that be, and, and as, once you have that, it's, I think it's like driving a car, maybe, where you, you kind of, in a, in a great car, a good car, yeah. uh, you, you forget there's a car there. Yeah. And you realize you're kind of flying through the forest. Or, uh, same thing here, where, where you kind of probably will start to forget that these tools that are all helping you are really there. You won't think about them consciously. There will be a little briefing thing in your ear, or there will be some kind of a, yeah. on a screen. But you'll just be thinking of it as part of your life. It'll be an extension of your senses, basically. That's, I, mean, I, I, I agree with that exactly. I think it, it will feel like you've somehow merged cyberspace in with the real world, and the real world just became richer. Yeah. And you didn't really know how that happened exactly. I mean, right. it just sort of is there. Right. And, it, and it will exactly be about making sure that when the processor is compositing some virtual object into the image of the real world, or it's whispering to you because it got some information, it does that at the right time. Because you get any jarring of that, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, you, know, you notice it a lot. And in fact, so augmented reality today, people think of these iPhone apps where you, you know, it uses the compass and the GPS to yeah. put something on the screen. But your hand kind of moves around. So what it looks like now is that those things are jiggling. And it's because they didn't use image recognition. They actually need to lock that stuff to objects in the picture, mm -hmm. figure out what the pose of the building is or these other, and put the sign on the side of the building instead right. of just floating out in right. space. Right. Right. And I think that's going to fundamentally change the way people interact with these things because they're going to go like this and wait, it's not there, yeah. it's there. Yeah. And, and also things like uh, display. I mean, one of the things that we're doing in the labs right now is you hold the, the phone up, you see a display on the wall, your pictures come up and you drag and drop onto the display, and the mm -hmm. thing that was on your phone now goes to the display yeah. and it's there. You can, know, can that you kind of... Can I go like that when you do it? Sure, yeah. <laughs> Throw it at the thing, yeah. <laughs> Choose which one. <laughs> when you let go of the phone, you're kind of bummed, but... <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. yeah, that's so, totally, totally yeah, cool. I think that stuff's going to absolutely happen. So, um, that brings... I'm having fun with you. So, we'll so, go wherever um, you want. I'm with uh, you. One of the things that occurred to me about December of last year, uh, and, and Patty Mays did a thing you've probably seen enough. Yeah. So, her, but she was wearing like boxes of gear. And, uh, the, the idea that, and this is kind of a psychological idea, the idea that today uh, the world is a pretty hostile place, basically. You know, you, you come into a resort, you haven't been there before, you don't know where the, what the layout right. of the thing is. Uh, you meet a bunch of people, you don't know who they are. Uh, are they going to rob you blind? Or is it be your next alliance partner? What's the history? Uh, you go to a place, uh, you go to a Christmas party for your own company, and you don't quite remember the name of that guy who helped you out with the golf thing. Or, and if you had a way of turning the world from being a basically hostile environment to a basically friendly, benign, known entity, right. Right, how deep a psychological change for a human being would that be? 
Well, I mean, I think it's, it's huge. I mean, it's, it's like you say, every place feels like your hometown. Yeah. I mean, you know, just today, getting up here, there was, uh, we were driving up the 405, the big traffic jam. I pull out, you know, this thing. I get on Google Maps. I find out that, you know, it's red for a long way away. We see the police helicopters up. You know, we get off the freeway. Kind of funny, everybody went down an on-ramp, but mm. that's another story. <laughs> And uh, anyway, so we got off, and then, you know, okay, now how do I reroute? But, you know, I'm telling the guy, okay, here, drive here, go here, all this stuff. I wasn't driving, by the way, somebody else was driving, so I wasn't doing this illegally. But, uh, but in any case, I mean, that notion that, I mean, I've never been to Rancho Palos Verdes before, mm -hmm. and yet I could find my way here on the back roads and say, no, you can't turn there, turn here, you know, that stuff's just precious. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then you see things like, you know, you, you have places where you are, aren't even there anymore, and so I... My wife and I, uh, my, my daughter's going to go to NYU. Mm -hmm. So we're out looking for a place. Maybe we're going to buy a place in the city, you know, just so we have some place to go to. And, to I was, yeah, and I was showing people, I said, here, let me show you the building. So I pull it up on, on the Google Maps with Street View. Mm -hmm. and with my Snapdragon processor, I actually can just scroll around, and they can look on the street where we were. Oh, that's the building you were. Oh, that looks nice. What's the neighborhood look like? Mm -hmm. I mean, all that stuff. And so it's context where you are and context where you were and yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff yeah. too. And we're going to add in the part with the cloud, which you, you aren't playing in yet, I think, but all, all of the supercomputing power available out there right. to, to be an assistant for you so that uh, in, in addition to the overlays that are obvious, geographic overlays and so on, it could be quite detailed and historic and could involve how you learn or how you see or any disabilities you've got, uh, any particular interests you've got. So yeah. you look at a building, it's blank face, right? But you're interested in music and it turns out that there's one thing in there which is a history of music or... It you just know, tells you. Yeah, or yeah. gives you or tells you on this, in this spot something happened that was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. and, you know, all those things, all those signs that used to be up on the <laughs> sides of the buildings, they're all going to be virtual. And sure. they're going to be, your friends are going to tell you this one's cool and this one isn't. Or, you know, we had this idea where you kind of just look around and just, as I pan in the environment, I can see where there's a lot of tweets going off. And I think actually somebody may be doing this now, but this notion that you could just pan around and find, hey, I'm over here, but man, there's something going on over there because there's a lot of people. Warfaring tweets. Yeah, they're doing something. Yeah. yeah. Or warfaring tweets. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, how cool would that be? You mm -hmm. kind of find where the happenings are, which then you start thinking, okay, now if I'm a, a restaurant owner, I'm going to try and find a way to get everybody to tweet at my restaurant of so course. people, you know, see that and come Five there. cents off your french fries if you tweet at it. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I think all, you know, all that stuff's going to happen more and more in real time. I mean, it, you know, it's, those things are kind of happening for mm -hmm. small groups of people right now. It's a question of, how easy do you make it so that everybody sees how to use it in the mainstream? Right, right, right. But uh, yeah, it'll happen. Well, we're, you know, we're just kind of leading right into the. Oh, by the way, you, you want to use aorta anytime? Go ahead. All right. You have my official approval. I like my aorta <laughs> working for me. <laughs> <Right>. No. <laughs> uh, that thing and and the idea that we talked a little bit about formats and and uh, so I, I happen to still have this bias that the seven by nine inch size mm -hmm. is a huge winner. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the launch of the iPad helped to confirm that. There are a million units gone. And, yep. um, it seems to me that with the addition of Aorta to that unit, yep. uh, we're now at a place where not only do we get the intelligent assistant working, but uh, we kind of open up a whole new level of, how to put it, it's, I guess it's social interactions. So yeah. you, the stuff that you're heading toward with, with sock nets and Twitter and um, gets a lot deeper. Oh, I, and, I agree. And how we, how we work socially is going to change. It, Twitter is just, to me, like the very right. edge. You're going to have rich interactions between people. Yeah. And, you know, we'll, we'll come into an environment like this. You know, we have badges on. It's sort of the most minimal way of announcing ourselves to mm -hmm. each other. But you could say, okay, I'm going to come in here, and on an ad hoc basis, I'm going to share pictures with you. Or, you know, you're not on my Facebook friends list. That's an a priori kind of thing. Right. I want to do something in the moment and share things. And I think... That'll happen. And, and you think about it even for things as important as I get in a car accident and I have medical information that I want the EMT to be able to find mm -hmm. out. And how does the EMT get access to that information? You're going to have to have classes of people have access to yeah. certain information about you too. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's obviously true in financial too and so forth. So mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, that, that whole notion of the social network and managing the privacy aspects, which you know, Facebook is getting in so much, you know, heat over. And should. It's going to be yeah. very, very fine-grained, and you're going to want to do some things on a relatively ad hoc basis. Mm -hmm. 
and then it comes down to can we get a user interface that you know makes it simple enough to do yeah. that? Because that that'll be. Let me just say you know I mean I, I agree with you about the format issue that it is nice to be able to see, like I'll sit in a, a meeting with a tablet and go through documents instead of getting paper documents. I get, but when I'm walking around, I actually you know I find this one to be really nice because this is a different screen set. Mm -hmm. What this one does is it fits in here. Mm -hmm. So, and we're actually, we've, we, we consciously, when we did our, this display, uh, this Mirasol display, we consciously, we're actually shooting for 5.7 5. Uh, 5. inch diagonal Pocket displays, because yeah. it'll fit, yeah, yeah, this one doesn't yeah. quite, because it's got too much margin, yeah. but the yeah. commercial ones, and how we're shooting for in long term, right. will be. Now, yeah. this thing will have much less battery, because it's mostly reflective, so it doesn't need as much, and maybe it just talks to your phone, maybe it's a complete mobile device with a cellular connection, too. But I think maybe that's the next form factor, the, the sort of tweener form factor mm -hmm. that works. So well, we'll see. That's, that's a fair bet to make, and, and I like making bets with guys on stage. So, All right. you know, um, my guess is you're, you're right, there's a pocket thing that'll happen, uh, but the, the book thing, that 9 by 7 will outsell it by 10 to 1 or better. You, you think, okay, so 10 to, we'll do a bet of 10 We're to 1 Global this. sales of that size versus that size. All right. Um, meanwhile, one last thing before we come back, to, and I want to come back to the, to the screen. Yep. But the, the last beauty thing about that size to me is, and I won't go through why it's great, but one thing that will be new about it, I think, and I think you see the same thing, is, so I go back to, it's great when I'm traveling. I'm moving around, it's in the car, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's at the restaurant, but now I'm back at the office. I've got a problem because I've never had my files synced properly, first of all. I'm, right. just, I'm really sick of that problem. And, and I, I, I don't want to have to, like, take this plug out of here or... And, uh, and I don't like owning a lot of things either. That's a different problem, uh, especially when I'm traveling, you know? Yeah. So I don't want to have nine things. I want to have one good thing. Right. I've got a feeling that this is going to be the, the, you know, pry my fingers off this, you know, I'll never let this thing go. Yeah. Uh, but when I get to the office, I don't want to use that thing. Right. And I have a feeling that I'm going to put it on the desk, and you're going to help me with wireless so that uh, immediately it lights up my 28-inch beautiful screen or whatever I've got there, yep. uh, plus my keyboard. Right? And the mount, it's all wireless. And it'll charge, too. You and just it'll put charge. it down and That's it'll right. charge. That's right, it'll charge wirelessly. Yeah. Uh, and I, I won't be using it, except that it's got the files on it, and it's got all this stuff, and whatever's right. in the, not in the cloud is right there. And it's more, it's going to be like about latency, and it's going to be about the displays that you have. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you'll be doing things like flinging stuff back and forth. So your displays that are you know, vertical, there'll be kind of places where you post stuff, and it, maybe it's a little bit more comfortable as you're typing and you're looking here instead of here, mm -hmm. although everybody seems to be doing this pretty well <laughs> these days. Yeah. Um, so, so I agree with that, that. And then it's, you know, it's sort of how much stuff do you have around you? Like I, my desk at work, I have three of the 32-inch screens there, mm -hmm. and I put stuff all over mm -hmm. those things. Mm -hmm. But it will be very cool when I'm able to just take that and put it down onto my device. Yeah and grab and go. Exactly. And I, so I, I think that'll happen. And, and, and then that's really just about latency, right? Because mm -hmm. the thing that I have with me, it's just more immediate. Because I certainly can go back to, through the cloud, to a storage place, whether it's my PC or something more centralized mm -hmm. in the cloud and, mm -hmm. and get access. So I think we're, we are going to see mixes. And you know this thing with Microsoft Office now being a web version, I mean, that, that'll be an interesting experiment. It will be. You know, because yeah. that's a big deal. And we know all these guys who are trying to you know, make readers for Microsoft uh, Office that don't work just perfectly, yeah. well, yeah. now it's going to work perfectly in the cloud. Right. So, right. so we'll see. I mean, I, I think that's going to be an interesting experiment. Mm -hmm. I do too. Uh, we had Ray Ozzie here yesterday talking about that stuff, and uh, he's the right guy to drive that, I think. Yeah. You know, he's, yeah. Well, I'm looking for those guys to do a thing where you have a tablet, and on Outlook, I have my meeting, and I just take my document, and I just drag and drop it onto the meeting notes, and then it shows up on everybody's tablet, and mm -hmm. it just works, and I don't have to give people, you know, this thick binders, and yep. it's going to be a great world when we can do that. All stuff. right, so and now you're forcing soon. me into wall computing. We're going to go to wall computing right, right. now. I was going to save that for later. All right. So, so um, all the money being spent on, on um, uh, boardroom size screens for uh, teleconferencing and all that biz, you know, to me is just a step before, it's a trans almost a transitional step toward uh, augmenting. Yes. So whether, I don't care where you are, whether we're standing together or whether you're in Tokyo, but, but the exciting thing to me isn't just talking to you. Right. It's working with you. Right. So if I'm your manufacturing VP and, and, and you're the CEO and there's another guy who's the design engineer and there's somebody else, I, 
I think that there's going to be a new interact, human interactive process which actually uses real-time computing assists for the conversation. Yeah. And so instead of me sending you an email with a spreadsheet showing you the manufacturing production estimates out of Malaysia, you know, I'll, be, I'll be standing there with you saying, well, if we did it out of Malaysia, and I'll bring this over, right. and you'll say, well, oh my goodness, that's exactly what we don't want to have happen that week. Right. right. Uh, and so and we'll how, actually, how do you think it's going to happen? You think it's going to be more natural gestures, or you're going to have your device and you're going to say, okay, I have this here? No, I think it's going to be gestures. Okay. I think we're going to be up there doing it. Okay. It doesn't mean that what you're describing won't happen, because yeah. it's certainly useful to have a room of 30 people right. and any of them able to say, here's a picture yeah. or here's a chart. Yeah, because the thing that we're thinking about is like using augmented reality and this image recognition stuff that you might look at things like screens and in the augment, augmented view, a little UI pops out of the side of the screen down here, and I can say, okay, send my video there, or send my... Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's just a way, I, it's like a remote control yeah. of the services that are available to you. And I, and I just don't know whether, how will you say, this is the thing I want, and that's the place where I want it to go. That's the thing that I, I, you know, I struggle with a little bit yeah. of, is it just kind of me standing in the room, or how do I grab, you know, we all seen you know, Minority Report, and they're all doing that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, but... Is that real, or is it more going to be I have something in my hand, I say, this thing, I want to go there, and I want to share it with everybody. Yeah. So we're talking about two different things. Yeah. And, we're, and they're two different meetings. So one is the board meeting. Right. Or, you know, where there are 20 or 20, whatever, and, and they, each person may want to have a moment where they say, uh, either they move things on that, or, right. or they remote, you know, or, or they have something to put in or take out. Right. That's one thing. But before the board meeting happened, there were four guys who were the manager, the operating guys, yep. with you, and you're doing real work. Uh, so, <laughs> so the board is doing real work. I didn't and say that. Uh, if any <laughs> of my board members listening? Real work. <laughs> uh, and, and that's the part that's new. I mean, I think the remote control part's going to be easy. Yeah. I, I can help you with that after we're done here. Yeah. But in terms Probably. of the how the wall computing part works, that's yeah. going to be that's going to be revolutionary. Yeah. And so the ability of you to work with your top people in real time as human you know, as human beings, mm -hmm. right? With you're joking around and you're sensing yeah. what people are feeling and you're, and you're trying to figure out if this is the truth or not and are these figures correct and, and you can make all those personal assessments while you're making the assessment of, of the actual numbers and charts and you can actually design new businesses and operations together as a group. Yeah. You can't do that today. I'm, you know, if it's you use some of the telepresence systems and you have adequate bandwidth on the network because when they get congested these things break down. Yeah. They are still badly. sending spreadsheets to each other, basically. Well, kind of you know, like some, I mean, the original Halo system, because they did it at DreamWorks, and yep. so Jeffrey Katzenberg was all about the emotional, you know, yep. how you interacted emotionally with the system. And it was pretty, you know, it's We've like you there. put we a thing down. We took the whole tribe to Halo. Oh, okay, so yeah, so you've seen the thing. Yeah. So you put the stuff down, and it scans it and sends it over there. That's and it's, right. It's, it's still scanning. Yeah. No, I get you, but yeah. this th is, it's this just is how do you get the stuff there. This and is how actual computing. Yeah. So no, it, that's it, clearly it, distributed computing. There's yeah. no question about that. Where, where you're pulling off an Oracle database and off of your financial information yeah. and various design, and you're putting it all together and making instant judgments about those things and then change them and what if and doing it again and making another instant judgment. And you work for two hours doing that. Yeah. That would be no, I, an I'm, accelerated I'm process. No, I, I agree. And I, I feel like you know, there is going to be a difference between those screens that you have the wall, the vertical screens, and the ones yeah. that you're doing your... I, I totally yeah, buy that yeah, concept. Yeah. And, I, and I do think you're going to fling things around. And, and there are already people doing stuff like that with um, virtualization where they are using video streams to actually send the image of the app. Mm -hmm. And because it's done with video, it's like you just put it anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so the guys actually do stuff like that. They kind of go like that, and mm -hmm. the thing goes from my phone over to that mm -hmm. one over there. Mm -hmm. And this one might have been... Android and that might be you know a Mac or something right and, right, right and so it just works yeah. but you know I think the web standards are going to help us do that too because mm -hmm. we're going to get out of this whole issue of what's the exact instruction set and you know and I mean that's what's you know made it possible for things like Snapdragon to come right. along and right. actually be you know legitimate computing platforms yeah so uh, I'm going to give you a choice now all right <laughs> Snapdragon's over there and Maricel's over there yeah take your pick. Uh, well, Snapdragon, we kind of touched on already. I mean, these yep. are all the Snapdragon things. So, so what's the future for that chip? The Snapdragon chip? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be higher, you know, uh, higher processor rate, clock rates, uh, more cores. Uh, you know, that's going into higher and higher level computing. What's the clock rate now? Uh, the one that's out right now is a gigahertz, and we got a 1.3 coming and a 1.5 mm -hmm. after that, and you know, so it's going to do the same thing, except that. 
what, as we do it, we're doing something interesting because we can scale the clock rates up and down of the different cores differently. Mm -hmm. So the idea that I have is, what the, you know, the reason why you might want different cores operating differently is, what's going to cause the phone to have to wake up or the device to have to wake up and do something, turn on the processor, turn on the screen so everything you know, runs? Well, the person touches it, then you want it to respond instantly and really put a lot of power into it. But a lot of times, it's just going to be stuff like what I said about this. You know, stuff's coming in over the network. It just needs to store it in memory and not mm -hmm. really do anything until mm -hmm. I open it up and then something right. has to happen. Right. So if you can run with less processing power, don't wake up the whole operating system. Mm -hmm. Just do the most minimal thing you can with the most power, you know, lowest power consumption processor you can. Mm -hmm. The thing that's sitting right next to the modem is going to do that well. Mm -hmm. And then when it turns out that you know, it's an alert or something and I really need to wake something up, then I turn everything on. Right. So, so that's how it's going to go. It's going to be asymmetrical. Uh, you know, there's mm -hmm. going to be many cores in these things, and the software is going to use the right one at the right time. Yeah. So, I, so that's, that's kind of where it's all headed. And, and if I'm the customer and you're selling me a Snap, Snapdragon in three years, what's the compelling buy? Why am I buying that instead of somebody else's chip? I mean, it's going to be we're investing probably more than most. I mean, of course, Intel's investing heavily, but I would say after them, we're probably <laughs> investing the most into doing our own designs. And we're doing our own designs because specifically because we want to really focus on low power consumption mm -hmm. and high performance. So mm -hmm. today, why do we get the wins we get? Because when you take a Snapdragon-based device, the stuff doesn't jitter. It actually does track with you. And so we have you know, good graphics in there, mm -hmm. good processing. And uh, of course, we're also trying to drive the vector of the best next radio technology. Yeah. And so the, the other thing that's interesting about a thing like Snapdragon is, think when you start getting down to like 28 nanometer and below, these chip, if you don't have a lot of stuff on your chip, you're going to be pad limited. So mm -hmm. you start losing the benefit of going to the smaller and smaller geometries. Mm -hmm. So that Snapdragon trip, chip today that's got, you know, uh, it's got the, uh, the ARM processor on it, you know, our version of that, it's got the DSP on, it's got all the modem on, it's got the graphics processor, it's got the GPS on it, you know, it's going to have... SOC. Yeah, it's going to, yeah. and five more radios and more, you know, all this, you know, like augmented reality, I mean, it's going to be much more stuff about sensor interfaces and all these kinds of things are going to happen. So that chip's just going to, it's a, it's a platform for integration, mm -hmm. and we're just going to continue to stuff as much stuff into it as we can. Mm -hmm. And then, then kind of that actually leads to Mirasol because I, I look at the display actually <laughs> because this is a MEMS-based display. So people, we should uh, okay, let's yeah. let's do the introduction. So, All right. so, so what is um, it? We, we've just glossed over the fact that you're a computer company, and we're moving into the idea that you're also making screens. Right. Um, so you woke up one night and you had this crazy vision, and the next day you started making screens. I mean, this is this is a big deal, <laughs> right? I mean, this the computer thing kind of happened by easing into it. In a, in a uh, these were similar, actually, right. because what happened was a long time ago, I started to think about you know, data on phones and realized that people are going to be looking at the phone more than they're holding it up to their ear, which, yes. by the way, is the case now. Yes. Um, and so realized pretty quickly the power consumption of the screen was going to start to dominate. Mm -hmm. So we started back then looking for display technologies, and we were doing things like you know, glasses and all sorts of yep. funky stuff, yep. projectors and all sorts of stuff. And so as we were looking around, we found this company that was doing this MEMS-based display. And it has all the right properties to it. So, you know, it's, it's like e-ink in that it's very, very low power and, mm -hmm. and reflective. Mm -hmm. But it can do video and, and color and all those kinds of things that, you know, a modern screen is going to need. So we made the investment. Now, when we invested in this company, and when we bought the, actually, we did the investment, and then we bought the company, we thought they were a lot closer to production <laughs> than they were. And uh, so the whole thing's been completely redone since uh -huh. then. But now it works, and we have a factory in Taiwan, and we should, I mean, if our partners, you know, uh, bring the product out, you know, we, we have the potential to ship this year the first, you know, this size display. Yeah. So 5.7-inch display. Yeah. Which could this be... This is, for those of you who haven't seen it, so, and, and let's do a, a little, uh, MEMS stands for Micro Electromechanical Systems. Right. Machine. So what it is, what's going on here is that to make the colors... Um, this is a beautiful screen. There's uh, basically the glass and an optical stack and then a mirror that goes up and down. And when the mirror is a certain distance, then it reflects a certain, you know, it resonates at a certain frequency, so it reflects a certain color. And this is RGB, so we have a red, a green, and a blue. So it's a mechanical refractory right. index just, changer. Yeah, yeah it's an a interference modulator uh -huh. that's either yep. black or some color. Right. And so they're just little mirrors. And then you think... And these are moving at what rate? 
Uh, well, this thing's, this particular demo is running at 15 hertz, but we can run them. We will run them. It's just, this is, yeah. it's a demo piece of hardware. Yeah. It looks like a product, but it. Well, I'm is a little more not. interested in actually what you yeah. can't, what it can oh, we'll, do. Oh, no, it'll be able to run as fast. I mean, it, it's video. running, yeah, we, yeah. we, oh, yeah, it runs video. Yeah. And we pump the air out of it, so it's not like that's not the thing. I mean, yeah. you, it's really just drive schemes and how yeah. fast can you move a mirror. And it reminds me of the TI uh, DSP. So right? they, they do this, mm -hmm. and we are doing this. Yes. Right? Yeah. And they have color filters, mm -hmm. and this makes the color from the structure itself. Exactly. So, for example, in LCD, we need less process steps than they do because they have to put color filters in there, mm -hmm. and they put polarizers in there. Mm -hmm. So we don't have those things, so mm -hmm. we gain much more reflectivity yeah. because of that. We're not losing light in those inefficient steps. And then this thing's just ambient light, but we actually know how to light the thing. And, and so, that, so that is why I think it's going to be interesting as a platform, too, because it's MEMS. Mm -hmm. And we all know that people are doing all sorts of interesting things with MEMS, sensors yeah. and components. Yeah. So I look at this. I look at the, you know, the chips one platform, and, and this is the other platform, platform yeah. and that, the phone's just all going to go into here or here, pretty much. Yeah. And then you got the battery yeah. and the plastic. And right, you know. right, right. So, um, so that's why we're really excited about it. Well, it's really beautiful. I mean, for those, you should, you should definitely try this if you haven't seen it yet. And, and we were just outdoors in bright sunlight, which, as you all know, is pretty tough on laptops. But this thing was perfect, I and mean, you could see it very, very clearly. So I, I think that's going to be well accepted. I, I hope so. I mean, yeah. it, you know, it, now we're in the process of just manufacturing, right? Mm -hmm. So we're getting the yields up and all those things. Mm -hmm. But it, I, you know, it, it's an interesting thing, and it, there's some analogies to CDMA about this, because CDMA, we went off in a direction that everybody said, oh, that's a dumb direction. Stanford professor said it violated the laws of physics and so forth. Well, I'm, a <laughs> uh, I'm a Cal guy, so I always tell that story. Um, and the same thing happened here. Everybody went off to OLEDs, and we went to MEMS, yeah. and people said, you guys are nuts, and mm -hmm. it won't work for X, Y, and Z reasons, and now it's working, and now we've just got to get the yields up. And it's, it's crazy. I would not have believed the TI stuff would have worked. If right. you had told me they have these mirrors, they're going to, I said, right. no, forget it. They're yeah. going to break, they're going to have gum inside. A and well, that's it's hard, by the way. It's not yeah. an easy thing to get to work. Well, I, but, we, but we know it can be done. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. Yeah. So that, that's been good. And I think the other thing that'll be cool about this is like, you know, you look at your phones today, I mean, they look like they're dead, right? They aren't. They're on the network yeah. and they're yeah. doing stuff, but they look dead. And so in the future, they're actually going to be live. Mm -hmm. So you think about that, okay, stuff will actually show up yeah, well, there on the screen. It doesn't cost any current at all once you set it. Is that correct? It's... Or so this now? one right now takes a very small amount of current. It's not exactly like e-ink, which is completely yeah. bi-stable. Right. Right. We are slight, we actually biased it not to be, uh -huh. but it's not, I mean, in the design of the technology, it can have history, and we could move the set point so that it could be mm -hmm. bi-stable. Mm -hmm. There's just a technical reason why we're not doing that right yeah, now. Okay. So, but it's a very tiny amount of current that mm -hmm. you need. So mm -hmm. it's, it's basically like you leave it on forever, and yeah. it's, I mean, yeah. it's almost the same. So, so one will be used to seeing a live screen, probably, rather than a desk screen. I think so, yeah. and, I, and then you start thinking, okay, what does that mean? You know, I'll get alerted by stuff, and things will pass around, and like this notion that you're wandering through space and stuff will sort of present itself to your phone, which will then alert you about the things you're interested in mm -hmm. or Well, ignore you see the ones some of the not. designs now from Android and from others uh, where it, it, they're starting to get it, and, and the phone face design uh, is, is heavily influenced by social networking, oh, and yeah. so they, they're trying to figure out what do you care about on a notice basis, on an alert basis. Uh, it'll be over there on the table, but you're, you have a quarter of an eye on that thing because I think so. it could be your mom popping up or it could be some friend saying, or your, your wife or your husband. And, and so there's always going to be some level of slight alertness about that display. That's and that technology is better, much better. That's right. Uh, I mean, that technology will allow you to do those kinds yeah, of things. Right, so then right. stuff will come together. And, and then you can imagine people are going to do all sorts of games. You know, it's probably games will be the first thing that somebody does with it. Sure. I'll play Pong with you with sure. my phone and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, but uh, I played on the original <laughs> Pong machine. You yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. That's, that's uh, pretty much perfect, I guess. We have about 1038 here. Uh, left, and we probably have people who would like to ask you questions. So, right. if, if there is anybody, please uh, stand up and uh, tell us your name and your company, and feel free to ask questions. Pretty shy. This is very unusual. These guys. It's are, after lunch. So yeah, they're digesting their uh, their lunch. No questions. Oh, there's one. All right. No count. Ty well, we thought you were leaving. Oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to climb over one. Uh, thanks for coming. Question, media flow. Yes. 
Um, help me understand your investments in media flow, where you're taking it, when it's coming up. I mean, we look at the limitations of spectrum availability and backhaul and some of the things around the world that are going on. So we're aware of some of those. But talk to me a little bit more about the business model, when we're going to see it, and kind of your long-term plans for media flow, if you would be. Okay. So right now we're running it basically as cable TV on your phone. And it was really designed to be a you know, multimedia. We called it media flow because it was really about any kind of media, including data casting, uh, content caching, alerting, all of these other things, interactivity. And you know, we, I think we under-executed on it. I mean, um, we, didn't, we haven't gotten all those new features out into the system, and those are now coming. I've, you know, the, the team is very focused on bringing those out. We talked about, I think we put out a press release about you know, having sort of uh, content caching capabilities on the system. And really, the, the reason why we did that was because we recognized that video, the, the value of a video bit is so much lower than the value of the other bits that were going over the system. You know, if you think about it, you could run voice at, uh, back then, say, 4 kilobits per second. We're running a channel of media flow at 400 kilobits per second. But people aren't willing to pay 100 times more for that, for that data, right? In fact, they probably only want to pay a flat rate no matter how much TV they want. So we said, okay, well, how do you solve that problem? Broadcasting solves the problem. But then you run into the issue that we were talking about, about push. You know, it, it's already clear to us, based off of the statistics of how people use the thing today, that things like episodic TV are really not that interesting on the go because you can't dip into them, or at least not in a broadcast sense. They're interesting in a cached sense. So what you really want to do is you want to record those things and have them there and you can watch them when you, when you have the time to do it. The things that are very interesting on MediaFlow that we found, besides kids TV, because kids, you know, they'll watch SpongeBob no matter what, uh, but it's, you know, it's live events. So huge spike for Michael Jackson Memorial, huge spike for the U.S. Open, Tiger Woods, you know, winning in, in uh, extra rounds. Uh, you know, those kinds of things are, are big drivers for it. And so the question is, is that enough to build the business on? And, and for us, we're, you know, we're looking at it very carefully to say, okay, Video is a really interesting thing. This live stuff's good. Now, what's the next thing? Are we going to be broadcasting newspapers? Are we going to broadcast other kinds of other media types? How much of it needs to be cached? Are there components of the web that you might want to uh, data cast out and cache? And uh, and and it's interesting too because what's going on in the phone market is you're seeing a lot of people going up to the smartphone, but you also see a lot of people going down to just voice and text because they don't want to pay sort of the, they, they don't really understand what it's costing them to be on the web. And how much money, how many bits they're going to use, how to, you know, when am I going to run out, when am I going to get an overcharge and things like that. So we're actually looking right now and doing experiments to see whether that even makes sense. Does it make sense to data cast some components of the web to people who still have a 3G connection, so they, if they want long tail stuff they can get to it, but give them some of the stuff that's you know, of interest. And, and then you start thinking about it, that's really a publishing business. I mean, it's, somebody will edit that, and the question is, how automated will that be? Will it be us doing it, or some content company doing it, or your friends doing it for you, and that will vote on what gets, you know. So all sorts of interesting stuff. So we're looking at that right now. Hi, Bob Anderson from IIT in Chicago. About a dozen years ago, you spoke in Chicago, and somebody asked you about the ruggedness of your phone, and you answered it by flinging it up to the ceiling of the ballroom, and it bounced into the marble floor about six times. You picked it up and called your office, which I still remember. Same question with this little mirror business. Would you, would you be able to do that same thing and have it survive uh, that kind of a test? It sounds like this one might be a little bit more sensitive. Well, just, I mean, it's a bigger piece of glass, so I probably wouldn't want to do that. And this particular one is really, it is literally, looks like a, a device, but it really is literally just a demo of the display technology. So this one in particular, I, I absolutely wouldn't do that with. But it's funny that you, you said that because we got to the, having to build the phone that rugged. And that, by the way, was the first phone that had, you know, you couldn't just unclip the battery. It was actually inside. And we had done that because I had run the handset business and we had two phones before it which had quite poor reliability. So we, like, overkilled that thing. That, I think there are still those phones around in the world because they are basically indestructible. Archaeologists will find them sometime in the future. So. <coughs> this is Celeste Chutani from Mobi Santé. Uh, I have actually one 
Question, what's Qualcomm doing to make it easy for people to develop peripherals that will uh, attach to the cell phone? The reason I ask the question, if you look at the evolution of PCs, the fact that there was a peripheral architecture, people could innovate much faster, they didn't have to wait for the next device to come in. And then peripherals took on. You could put it in the PC, webcams, yeah. all of that. It would seems that that's trying to happen in the cell phone industry as well currently, but it's not possible. So are there any plans in that regard? So I, I guess the, it is possible in the sense that Bluetooth does allow you to have peripherals to a phone. And then the question is, how many things are you willing to carry around? Like, will, will this be a peripheral to a phone or a phone itself? I don't, you know, it's hard to say. Uh, what, we're, what we're working on right now are sets of more peer-to-peer -peer like technologies and personal area network technologies to try and make the pairing of things easier and to have it be much more obvious to a person, okay, these two things do want to talk to each other and therefore don't make me look up in the manual how to pair them but, but do other things, and, which I don't want to exactly explain right now, but in a few, maybe a year or so, I'll, I'll come back and tell you what we did. But, but in any case, so we're trying to do that. And, and, and then the question is, what's the bandwidth of those connections? Because if it's a screen, it wants to be one bandwidth. If it's an earpiece, it's another. If it's a it's a wireless sensor that's monitoring my heart rate or my fluid levels or blood pressure or whatever. It's a different set of things. So we're building all those kinds of technologies. But what about higher data rates? I mean, Bluetooth still has limitations. Right? She has an ultra, a beautiful, oh, you, uh, UWB? A beautiful <laughs> ultras, no, ultrasound uh, uh, handheld unit, which right. can be operated anywhere in the world, connected to a cell phone, uh, where you can actually see the output or send it to. Well, I, that, I mean, so I just, we were uh, doing this uh, healthcare. Uh, summit and uh, somebody brought in a retina uh, camera for getting diabetic retina retinopathy. Retinopathy. Yeah, yes, yes. I mean this big, I mean, and it has an antenna on it for exactly that. And we, one of the things that we were talking about is the notion that it's not that individuals will diagnose themselves, but they can do the data acquisition, and then you send it somewhere and it can actually be. So I, I'm I believe so in all that stuff. So the question, what data rate do you need yeah. though? Well, we, 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 tens of megabytes. Yeah, so. So USB works for us, Bluetooth doesn't. So what about convincing Microsoft to run Windows on ARM? Working on that. <laughs> <laughs> Ty? <laughs> Love to have that happen. Yeah, the answer is Windows 8, by the way. So, uh, Paul, I'm Scott Gardner. Welcome back to Fire. Thanks. Uh, my question's about Intel and um, Actually, Odalini this week was asked a question about ARM, and as you, you've chosen to be in the ARM camp, and there's this huge battle developing. And Odalini actually. I don't had, think they invited us into their camp, by the way, but yeah. anyways. They, oh, yeah, and yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so you've uh, so defaulted to one side, and the battle is commencing. Uh, what Odalini said in discussing ARM was that they have Intel's in a better position because they don't have this margin stacking with chip vendors, foundries, and then IP vendors also need their cut. And just like to get your thoughts on. You know what's happening with this with Atom versus ARM, and yeah. is there really any inherent uh, businesses advantage you have going with an IP play? Well, I mean, coming down into the smartphone, the big advantage the Intel architecture has is it has Windows and a software ecosystem. But that software ecosystem doesn't translate to that really. I mean, that you know, Windows Phone is built on ARM. In fact, on on Snapdragon, um, and and so. I, the thing that those guys need to do is they're, they're trying as hard as they can to drive their power consumption down to get into the right form factor. At the same time, we're trying to make sure that we have as broad a software ecosystem as we can. But the fact of the matter is they're having to make investments in software ecosystems. So then they start to argue, well, we have our fabs. That's a benefit. But you, I mean, the fabulous industry exists for a reason, which is I spend 0% of my time worrying about filling my fab because TSMC statistically multiplexes across a whole bunch of people to make sure that their fab stays filled. And so I, we spend 100% of our time trying to do the next new innovation, whereas they have to, they have to balance those things. And so I think that's a, that is a disadvantage for them. And they would then argue, well, we control the process technology so we can drive. But we work hand in hand with TSMC driving process technology. And we've been so focused on low power that I think we have a very significant advantage, even to the stuff that they've recently announced. They, their power is not at the same place that our power is. And we're going to co continue to come up the compute power, you know, in terms of how many uh, instructions per cycle you can do, how many cycles that it can run, you know, what's the clock cycle and all that. So, 
So that, I think that is really interesting sort of, you know, uh, point of contention. And in the end of the day, you know, I think the arm camp's in a, in a really strong position. But, you know, those guys are very, very strong, powerful, <laughs> good. I do not underestimate them at all. Well, we've done it. It's uh, two seconds left or so, and uh, thank you very much. All right. Well, uh, we've so all much. learned a lot, and we wish you well. Thank you. Thanks. I appreciate it.